Hey everybody, this is Nintendo Version 5 and I'm doing a little reading for you all by my friend T-Bone Tony. He made a little thing on the Journal on DeviantArt called Hiroshi Yamauchi, Rest in Peace. Here goes. Hiroshi Yamauchi, Rest in Peace. He was born as a Yamauchi, grandson of the second president of Nintendo, whose company was known across Japan as a card gaming business. His father walked out on him, and so did his mother, due to the shame of marriage. So young Hiroshi was forced to live a strict life under the rule of his grandparents. World War II came to Japan. Young Hiroshi was just a teenager at the time, and wanted to enlist. But the Yamauchi grandparents were smart not to allow him. Considering the way it ended, it was perhaps for the best. Hiroshi then focused on his schooling at university to study law in an ever-changing Japan under U.S. occupation. But his career as a lawyer was cut short due to his grandfather taking ill. I don't know how I pronounce that, yeah, that's okay. So young Hiroshi Mauchi became third president and CEO of Nintendo. He became a businessman early in his 20s. He asserted his authority at Nintendo. He fired anyone who was a threat to his family. The pent-up anger from his childhood now had power in his early adulthood. The U.S. style laws became a threat to Nintendo's card game business. That was one battle Hiroshi Yamauchi knew not to fight against. So instead, he became an entrepreneur and tried finding new ways to keep keeping Nintendo in business. <coughs> Sorry if I mispronounced anything. From instant noodles to a taxi service to a hot steaming. Love hotels that cater to loving couples? Okay... <laughs> Hiroshi put Nintendo's name onto almost anything. Anything to preserve Nintendo's long history during tough and difficult times. Then came a day when he peeked into an office to inspect his employees. And one of them called Gunpei Yoki, Yokoi, Sorry, I couldn't find a really good picture of him. Was playing around with a pet project. Yamauchi saw how his employee played with the thing with a stern look on his face. And he said with a clear voice, Make that into a game and sell it. The pet project that Yo Yokoi was playing became the Ultra Hand. And then Nintendo started to make toys for the kids of Japan. By the time of the 1970s and a new age of electronics was being born, Hiroshi sold most of Nintendo's assets and invested into electronic toy development. In a time of Pong arcades and electronic calculators, Yamauchi saw a market to be dominated. However, he had no idea how to get it in until one day his employee Gunpei Yokoi, how you pronounce the name, took an eventful train ride. Yokoi saw a Japanese businessman who was looking bored while sitting next to him. Then suddenly, the man took out his electronic calculator. <laughs> he seemed to enjoy it. Perhaps he was typing 531 Yokoi saw how much fun the Japanese businessman was having, just playing around on a simple electronic calculator. Yokoi told Yamauchi and what he saw on that train ride, and Yamauchi told him to make an electronic game that was the size of a calculator. And so, the Game & Watch was born. And in the 1980s, it became the first big hit for Nintendo. Game & Watch will become big in the decade and then follow on to produce the Game Boy that would dominate 
the next decade in the 90s. However, there was another thing that happened during the time of the 70s. A friend Yamachi had a son who had just finished his arts degree at university. So on a dinner out with his friend, Yamachi was introduced to a young man called Shigeru Miyamoto. The friend begged Yamachi-san to give his son a job at Nintendo. So then, Hiroshi Yamachi told young Miyamoto to paint the arcade cabinets everything from Sheriff to Radar Scope. And when it was time for Yamachi to expand Nintendo into the United States, he placed his bets in the arcade ring in North America. The arcades failed in the American market. Even Radarscope, that was a success in Japan. Nintendo of America was losing money, and a man called Mario demanded the rent. Yamauchi then told Yen Miyamoto to come up with a different game to sell, one that would attract the North American arcade gamers. So, with the help of Gunpei Yokoi, who handled the arcade technology, Miyamoto thought of a story from one of his manga ideas. It was a simple story of a gorilla being mistreated by a man, and the gorilla stole the man's girlfriend. And the game took place as the man tried to save his girlfriend from the gorilla. It was called Donkey Kong, released in 1981. And they called the man Mario in the game. It was the first arcade game to have a story. Unexpectedly, Nintendo hit another success. But with success came attention for bigger companies. One such company was Universal Studios. The movie company claimed copyright violations against Donkey Kong, all because the name sounded like King Kong. But when most smaller companies would have bowed to big American businesses, Hiroshi Yamauchi stood firm. He hired lawyers like Howard Lincoln, who claimed that Universal did not really own King Kong because of default. Nintendo won, and they were allowed to keep their money. It was the first ever video game lawsuit win against another media. Nintendo was building up a war chest of cash for Yamachi-san's next big idea. In 1983, Japan was introduced to the Nintendo Famicom. A console game system was like a computer for families. But then, the release for North American market was on the cards. The industry in America was in the middle of a massive market crash. Nintendo first thought of trying to market their console with Atari it was going to be a win for both companies. However, Atari saw a game of Donkey Kong being played in the Coleco version, however you pronounce that, and therefore Atari refused to sign with Nintendo. So, Nintendo went in the market alone, but the crash was still in full force. They showed the Famicom at technology events, but nobody ever saw any interest in the console at all. So with the help of Gunpei Yoki, Yokoi, however you say that, Yamachi-san told him to design a toy to be sold along with the console. The name of the toy was Rob the Robot. S stands for Robotic Operation Buddy. That Rob was what gave the toy retailers the confidence to take the, in Nintendo's new console. Plus, with the redesign for the North American market, came the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. The NES sold well within the first year in 1986, but more was to come for Nintendo. With some games from Miyamoto's creative mind came Super Mario Bros., the platform game that changed it all. The NES Mario games sold massive copies in Christmas 1986, and again with more games in 1987 with Legend of Zelda. Years and years of more games and more magic. The money came in to revive the North American video game market. But with success came competition in the 90s, with Sega 
having the Blue Hedgehog against Nintendo's Plumber, Sony with their CD technology, and Microsoft with their online gaming ambitions. Hiroshi Amatsu was getting too old to keep up. He had to choose a successor, but this time not from his own family. So he decided to trust his company to a person who had CEO experience from a company at Nintendo that had helped to survive in the 90s. The CEO of HAL Laboratories called Satoru Iwata. Satoru Iwata was joined by Shigeru Miyamoto to become the team that would take Nintendo into a new century. They came up with a Nintendo DS and the Nintendo Wii, using ideas and philosophies that were formed by Hiroshi Amachi and Gunpei Yoki. Nintendo had their success in video games all over again, but like before the market was changing with Apple's iPhone in the mix, plus the Google's Android technology for games to be played on phones. Nintendo is facing a new battle on both consoles and handheld fronts by Sony and Microsoft. Hiroshi Amatsu is a legend in his own right. The success of Nintendo and their continued survival is thanks to him. And no matter how hard the market is for Nintendo, ignore them at your own peril for they have survived tougher markets in the past. Tribute to Hiroshi Amatsu who survived 80 to live 85 years. Rest in peace. And once again, Mr. Yamachi, me and my friend T Bone Tony, and all of us at Nintendo fans, all of us, we thank you. And we hope that you do rest in peace and that we will see you again in heaven someday. God rest your soul. God bless you all. This is Nintendo Vegeta 5 signing out and have a wonderful blessed day.